guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab. I am so glad to have you back checking out what I am up to. So I just picked up this hand-painted window at a monthly auction that is online that we do here locally. Though the seasonal seams are very nice. I love that it had four panes. The wire, the hanging system is a little bit long for me, but I absolutely loved the four panes of this. So, unfortunately, if you all love this, I, it's not going to stay. I am actually going to make it so you can use it year-round, but I need to first um, remove the hanging system, which is very long. You'd have to have quite a space to hang this, and then, yep, I am going to take off that hand-painted scenery. So kind of like when people paint on crockery, all I do is need to wet it down and let it soak. And since it's not a porous item that would be soaking the paint in, it should, after being wet, should easily come off with a scraping tool. What you're seeing here on my rag is the stain from the wooden frame so it's not the glass it's the stain now so I have to decide if I want to paint it or keep that wooden because it's definitely going to cause some white paint to bleed through but I have to go in on each one of these panes it's a really bad caulk job which old windows usually are and I'm just trying to clean it up a bit. And I was really glad that the back side was the one that was painted, so that was not the one I was going to have to worry about. I absolutely loved the color of the brown of the front of this. It is just aged beautifully, and I'm going to leave it as is because I really think that it matches this recycled paper really well. So yes, nope, I'm not going to paint a window today. <laughs> okay, well not this one anyway. So now all I have to do is figure out where I need to make my cuts because I need to make four cuts, well three cuts, <laughs> for the four pieces that are going to go into the windows. So I'm just trying to guesstimate, measuring, you know, you think you measure, you're just, yeah. Anyway, yep, so then I just have to make the executive decision to finally make the cut. So all I'm gonna do is slide the window up, hopefully the paper won't shift, and then where the slats are of the windows, I'm gonna go ahead and make a couple snips with the scissors just to give me a guide of where I need to try to cut straight. Now that I have those snipped, I'm not going to cut them apart quite yet. I'm going to be doing a mirror effect for all that dead space on the glass so you don't see all the way through it. So I'm just taking a Sharpie, tracing the outline. It's going to give me a general, I, I want it to fade over the paper, but I need to know a general area where the pig is, where the writing is, and where the paper stops and starts. I still have another step before I can cut my paper apart. I like to distress the edges of the paper, so to keep it in that general area where the paper is going to be, I'm leaving it together. Now I'm just taking my mouse sander and a piece of wood underneath and just letting the paper and the sander, sander kind of just distress and rip on those edges just to look a little bit so it looks like it's been worn with time. And then now I can go ahead and make that ever nerving of trying to cut a straight line. So all I'm going to do is just try to follow my measurement on the all the way through as best as I can. It'll be that perfectly imperfect, but along as it's glued to the window and it matches up, I think it'll be okay. So now I'm working on the back side of my window. The Sharpie marks are on the front. I taped off the to protect the frame of the window. And now what I've got here is distilled vinegar and 50% just plain old water. And now what I'm doing is I'm covering up the sprayer so it's just making big drips. And where the drips are, when I spray my mirror effect, it's not going to attach to that. Now as soon as I get my water vinegar droplets 
applied, I go right over it with the mirror effect. Now I'm not going to get complete coverage with one coat, but that's where that Sharpie comes in hand, he, that you know where your main image is going to be. You want it to fade into your paper, but you don't want to completely cover it up. So the Sharpie is kind of key on that front part. You can help your mirror effect along using a blow dryer or here I'm using just a heat gun to help it dry so you can tell where it's the light gray and then it turns shiny and then those are all the water droplets. So I'm just helping it along to dry faster. And after it is all dry, I just go back in with Kleenexes. I like Kleenexes because there's no texture to them, so they're not leaving any kind of texture in the mirror effect. So all I'm doing is dabbing all those water droplets off. And what I'll do is when my Kleenex get too wet, I will get some more Kleenexes because actually if they're too wet, they'll start taking your mirror effect off. <laughs> Now, depending on how much mirror you want or how much cover you want or how much aged you want it to look is just, it's a personal preference. So I usually do at least two coats. Sometimes I do three. It just all depends on how I'm feeling that day. So yep, I'm going in with my second coat of a mirror effect. I don't mind seeing some of the paper underneath, but I just really like that mirror effect to fit it, fill in that dead space. So now we're going to adhere the paper onto the window. So that's where kind of outlining the pig and the writing, sometimes you may not actually see your outlined line through the mirror effect. So it's a little bit of a helper to have a little bit of a guide of the other inner image. So I'm just trying to match it up. I know that I didn't get a complete tight fit, but just in case I, it's best just to have a little too much than not enough. So yep, that's all I'm doing is trying to make sure that I'm centered. I'm covering up. The caulking kind of makes it kind of hard because it's not the best job. But you know, it's that perfectly imperfect. It'll be beautiful once we're done. So I am just using regular Mod Podge to apply as an adhesive to stick down the paper. So I'm just going to use a brush, just a paint brush to apply it. And then I find that if I use a mister bottle to wet down the Mod Podge along with wetting down the paper, I really get um, a good adhesion to the glass and then it really helps get out those wrinkles. And then because the paper has become so wet, a ball of saran wrap really helps to move it around. Sometimes your fingers will rip it, but the, for some reason that saran wrap just helps lay that paper down. So now I just have to do the other side. I kind of work in sections um, just so that I can keep my paper straight. And then I've also done this enough times that I've learned that I don't want my Mod Podge going over. I almost cut it short on that on where I'm applying it so that it's not completely over the paper because I do notice that it kind of messes up the mirror effect and you can see that underneath. So as if you notice, I don't go all the way to the end of the paper or beyond. So even when I'm pushing the paper down with the strain wrap, I'm really trying to not work that Mod Podge to squirt out anywhere. And then after I get it the way I want, I go back through and then just spray it all down. I really can see my image this way. I can see if there's any air bubbles, any wrinkles that I need to work out. And then I'll move on to my next piece. <music> Now I've cut a piece of contractor's paper to cover the back of this window, but first I'm gonna go ahead and spray, yep, I'm spraying it black. That way you don't, I've learned, you know, you kind of tweak a project as you're getting down your technique. And I really like painting the back of the paper black, and that way 
I'm not changing the color of the paper. I'm not changing the color of the mirror effect, but what you're going to see through those speckle holes of the mirror effect is this back background and it really pops that decoupage paper. So this contractor paper is not only helping with the back back ground of the back of the piece, but it's also protecting the mirror effect and the image and the paper inside. So all I do is hot glue it on, then I take some sandpaper and then just sand off those edges so it's a nice clean cut. And then my final step is to add a hanging system Weight appropriate because this is a, <laughs> a large window and I have to share with you guys as I was flipping and working with this window, I just smacked the bridge of my nose. Something terrible and as I'm editing this, I'm having pains <laughs> about this window. Oh my gosh. Uh, luckily, I don't have any black eyes, but boy, do I feel it <laughs> even a couple days later. So, yep, I just use those eyelet hooks. Um, then I have a small little ruler so I can size it down and then we just use a 17 gauge wire which is like for it's a nice strong wire so when it comes to windows I don't want <laughs> I don't want them falling so I want to make sure that my hanging system is weight appropriate. I must have been seeing a little bit of stars because I turned the camera on when I was done cleaning this window, taking all the Sharpie marks off with some Norwex cloth. Yes, that Sharpie comes right off. share with you how I'm going to make over this window. Four dollars. It's funny because we started out um, another garage sale day and I had spied some windows and oh she wanted like 20 bucks a piece. So I ha sadly had to pass because there's not any resale at 20 bucks a piece. But for four dollars, yes, I will be happy to take this four pain one home and make it over. So and I know there's always a reason that's only $4, but it was a grab and go. I knew there was some wonkiness at the bottom, but yeah, for what I can resell these for, I need, they need to be, especially a smaller one needs to be under $5. So a larger one under $10 for me to make a profit because there's always a lot of work that has to go into these windows, as you'll see. Now the moment of truth. What is underneath all those layers of paint? Well, not only was the bottom of the window wonky, but it had dry rot. Dry rot is where the wood is just disintegrating on its own. So the layers of paint were apparently to glue it together. So what I'm going to do is just take 80 grit sandpaper, get all that loose off, and just try to make it as straight as I possibly can. Yet yeah, you could take a table saw or some kind of a cutting tool, but a lot of times there is a metal piece holding the corners together, so that's not always an option. There was still a little bit of a bump in the middle. On the sides, I was actually hitting that metal piece, so I decided to just use the Japanese saw to try to see if I could get a little bit more of that wood off to make it more visually straight. It's always the perfectly imperfect with old wooden windows anyway, but just for a visual, I'd like it to be a little bit straighter. Okay, I think I got it as straight as I possibly can, so now I'm going to fill in the holes with some wood putty.
-hmm. Okay, so when I said a little bit of wood and honey, I meant a lot of wood honey to make that visual even once it's painted. I'm going to now fill this in with some shellac. That wood putty is really porous surface. And if I didn't prep the surface with some good um, prosody filler, it would really stick out. But after I get two coats of that on, I'm going to go ahead and just spray paint this frame black because it'll have a primer in it and I want to see that underneath of black on this frame anyway. So now this is not my usual go-to when it comes to old windows. I usually paint them white and distress them, but since there's that perfectly imperfect of that bottom piece, I thought, you know what, I'm going to go in with some school glue, put a nice coating on that, and then I'm going to go in with a nice heavy coat of my Kills paint and primer to make that crackling effect. So when you're doing a layer of paint over your glue, you let your school glue dry just a little bit so it gets kind of a skim coat on top and then you really fill your brush up with your paint. So yep, as you see, it's a one coat coverage, but then you try to work in just one direction so you're not taking the glue off. And as it dries, it makes beautiful crackles. Now I'm making sure that I get my windows on the back side nice and clean. I'm gonna be covering this up. There's no was no need to paint the back side because I will be having a finish on there anyway. So just cleaning up my windows with some Norex cloth, making sure that, yep, this is going to be covered up. So it's the last time it's going to be clean for a while. So now I'm sure you're all wondering what I was going to put behind the window. So a few weeks ago, I had picked this bag up at a garage sale for a dollar. So I love old grain sacks, flower sacks, sacks like this with old writing on them. So actually this little bag is the perfect size for this window. And it's just that turkey right in the middle. It was like it was made for this window. Now the tricky part is keeping it centered. As you see, as I laid the window on there, it is all centered, measured, the whole, yes. <laughs> so what I need to do now is I'm just going to fold over those ed edges. I'm going to tape those down. I unfortunately am not going to cut the backing off to make two different projects out of this because the way that they sew these, they are they may look straight, but they're not always straight at all. So if I went to cut off that backing, I'm not sure it would be enough for another project. And plus there's a hole in the front of this and then we would see through the hole and then it kind of needs to go cockeyed. It's not straight up and down, but for right now all I'm doing is taping, trying to keep it in place so I can attach it to the window in the back. Now that I have it flipped over, you can see what I mean. There's really on the one side and not a lot of fabric to attach to this window frame. So I, uh, yep, I'm not going to risk it by trying to save that other wording on the back. And then you can see um, a little bit of holage. It's all good. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to hot glue this on. That way, if I used a staple gun, remember the wood was kind of dry rotted. Um, so I'm not sure... I don't want to cause any more problems as I've already fixed it. And then I don't want to pull it completely tight with a staple gun. So, yep, I'm just using some hot glue to glue it on. Just very gingerly, just pressing it down because I don't want to pull on my flower sack to stretch it out. And I've got it all straight. I just want it to stay that way as I'm gluing it down. Thank you. 
just like my earlier project with the decoupage paper on the other window, I'm just going to take some of the contractor's paper, cover up that back, same way of sanding it off so you get that nice edge, and then using a eyelet hanging with the wire system to properly hang this window. up is this orange shutter that has lots of yes it has a lots of bling on it that has seen a better day so yep we're going to tackle this shutter next and see what we can create so but first I'm going to have to remove all of this old outdated a little bit worse for wear falling apart greenery and I wasn't really sure how it was attached you just never know how somebody's going to attach it so it was actually hot glued and stapled on If at all possible, the easiest way to <laughs> to paint a slatted shutter like this is to spray paint it. So I'm going to go in with my Rust-Oleum paint primer and the black first to cover up this orange paint. Since I have so many comments that people enjoy watching me spray paint, here's another with the White Kills Paint and Primer with my True Coat 360 handheld sprayer. So what a difference some paint makes. So now I'm gonna go in and I wanna see some of that black that I put on underneath. So I'm just taking my orderable sander to get down to that black and maybe show all the way past the orange into some of the wood and distress this piece. After I got it distressed the way they wanted it, I cleaned it up all the sanding dust. I'm and making sure there's not any of those little, they had these little BBs that just kept showing up from that garland that was on there. So I'm gonna go ahead and seal this in with some polycrylic. Before I put any pretties on the front of the shutter, I'm gonna go ahead and add a couple eyelet hangers to the back of this so that it has a hanging system. So I'm just going to even one on each side. So yep, it, uh, wire really wouldn't work if you're going to hang coats or anything off like that. It would tip it back and forth. So this is one of those objects that needs one hanging system on each side of it. So now to start finishing the shutter off, I'm actually going to make it into kind of a coat rack type of system. So I have these hooks that I order off of Amazon that are a little bit on the smaller side and they are a perfect fit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick four out. That seems like that is a good number for reselling that people really like that four number. And then I'm just going to lay them, even them out with the slats of the shutter. But I'm not just going to screw my screws in because the shutter is a nice hard wood. So I'm going to have to pre-drill my holes first. 
So now I need to fill in that blank space, or you could leave it as is if you want, but I want to add a little something, a visual to this. So now I go to my stash to see what I have that would fill this up. And right now I don't have any thrifted wreaths or have been to Hobby Lobby to get anything that's on sale. So I'm just kind of playing around to see what I have. So popping that black star, I thought really tied everything together in between the balsam wreath and then you had your galvanized so it really popped that and then I thought I would paint or stain that wreath but I really like that color that contrast of the all three of those together so I'm going to leave that as is but now I need to attach start attaching it to where you see on the shutter there's not a lot to work with so on the very tips of that balsam wood wreath I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of tight bond glue and then attach some brad nails with just the couple spots that I can actually attach it with. for watching today's video and what did you think i know more windows i just absolutely love coming up with the idea for that four pane long four pane window and it was a big one so i really had to think outside the box and then that wow that that little four dollar window was way more needy than i thought it was but that sack that flower sack with the turkey on it fit in there perfectly and i know everybody's like oh you should have ironed it oh my goodness i i iron things and then they go back wrinkled it's just how that works with that type of material it's just been that way for so long but it gives character it's character along with the dirt and the stains and all that it's character you all it's a beautiful old window and the crackling really helped hide all the flaws that i couldn't fit so it's definitely one of those perfectly imperfect and then along with a shutter, a shutter, yeah, let's just change it up. And it's just a beautiful new piece of wall decor. That, so that's just a nice piece. So let me know down in the comments below if I inspired you in any way to look at secondhand finds in a new way and which one of the three that I made over today was your favorite. And again, if you were part of our YouTube family, thank you so much. And if you are new and you're checking out this content for the first time, and you liked what you saw, please hit that subscription button along with the notification bell so you know when we've uploaded a new video. And we will see you next time, guys, and you can see what we're up to. Bye!